Hey everybody, so you are watching this replay with my friend Matt and I, and you know, he, Matt, you even said something just a couple seconds ago that during this COVID time is teaching us a lot to be patient with one another and patient with the times, but also patient with technology. <laughs> so this is what we're doing, and I'm so grateful that we're still able to um, to talk and um, chat and share and um, share with you all that are watching this replay. So, um, Matt, why don't you take just a second to introduce yourself and tell everybody where you are serving currently? Speaking of technology, I had uh, somebody try and call me, and <laughs> it was coming up on, uh, on my computer, my iPad, and <laughs> on everywhere. You have an iPhone, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. See, y'all have all those things connected, y'all. iPhone people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tomorrow there's an Apple keynote. So uh, if you're watching this on September 14th, tomorrow you need to uh, make sure that you stick around and watch the news. So, uh, but hey, it's it's a pleasure to to be here with you, and thank you again for uh, asking me, and and also for us to be able to. To catch up and talk, I think that's uh, that's the most fun yeah. about it. And uh, so I was in, I was serving in Orlando for a little over seven years, and then in 2014 um, moved to Fresno, California. And I had uh, received a call about um, moving here and replacing. Uh, the church was looking for someone who had served for. A number of years and then was uh, had retired and so then uh, coming in and, and filling that role and initially I was uh, I said no it's it's not the right timing I love Orlando uh, love serving at the church and uh, you know a lot of Orlando people that are that are watching and I was on staff at Faith Assembly and um, and so I loved what God was doing there, and um, even beyond that, I had great friendships that uh, were in the community with other worship pastors. Orlando is a unique community in that uh, we're able to um, have friendships with other churches, and that somebody have a worship night and bring worship pastors from uh, from other churches, and so it's a unique culture. And I was. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to to leave that. And so we said no. And then after that, my wife, uh, Mary Beth, had looked at me and she was like, did you really pray about it? Because I didn't, I just didn't want to move. <laughs> and so uh, then we started praying about it and God just really showed us um, in some incredible ways that yes, that is the path uh, that we needed to pursue. Uh, not knowing what was ahead of us, uh, but I know that when God does something, um, he does it well, and he doesn't just look, when there are transitions, God's not just going to look out for my best interest or my family's best interest. He wants to look out for uh, the church or faith family that you're also leaving, and when you make it a point to leave well, and transition well, then God does incredible things. I, I am so excited that uh, John Dreher is a worship pastor at Faith now, and it. Um, I love being able to be on the West Coast because when I'm getting ready for church, I can watch um, and participate in their worship services, and uh, it's just it's very fulfilling when you see God do something. And you know that he has, he has all of our best interests in mind. He doesn't play favorites. Yeah. And, um, and so, so that's how we ended up in Fresno. I had to look at where Fresno was on a map uh, when I first went out because I, I had no idea uh, where it was at. But, uh, but it's, it's been an incredible process, um, a challenging journey, but uh, an amazing one. 
Yeah, man. And there, and you're, you didn't even, we hadn't even started the tip of the iceberg of your, of your journey from there. But, you know, I'm so glad that you mentioned about the relationships here in Orlando. And I always wondered about that. Like if, because we, you're right. Like we have so many connections with relate with worship leaders in different churches and, and it is a beautiful thing, but I always wondered if other cities experience that, like, because we, it's, it, so it's not a common thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's very unique. Um, there is, when I first uh, got here, there's some other worship pastors that uh, we started and really was helpful to me in our journey is there were three of us that would get together and every once a month we would get together and we would pray wow. and we just said, okay, we're not going to, we're not going to talk about our churches. We're just going to. Yeah. connect with each other and just pray and um if there are things going on in your life yeah and it was um it was a key thing for me even in the journey that was ahead of us that we didn't even didn't even know yeah yeah i know I, i'm thinking back to when i first started like worship leaders association wla back in like 2004 when i first started leading worship there was like i felt like i was by myself and so what kind of did the same thing, just started reaching out to other worship leaders and just, you know, befriending and creating those relationships because we, you know, truth be told, I couldn't share things with the people that I was leading. Right. Sometimes I couldn't share things with my pastor and, but I needed to be able to connect with other people that were serving in the same capacity. Um, yeah, I, for sure. You know, and then now we're doing this where we're reaching people literally all over the world. It's just such a such a great um, opportunity. Um, you have been leading worship for how long? Like the totality of worship leading? Um, it's probably probably like thirty years. What? Um, I uh, I just hit I my fiftieth birthday. That. <laughs> what i was so, not expecting that well happy belated birthday yeah <laughs> thank you i uh actually started in in kind of late high school you know even prior to that time um my my dad had passed away i'm the youngest of six my dad had passed away when i was um in eighth grade and later in high school i started singing because my youth pastor would just drag me to events and he would have me sing and that was really kind of my first um kind of getting my feet wet and i felt like i was called to ministry but i didn't even know what that was like mm -hmm. um you know it wasn't common at that time um you know i'm a you know 80s uh 80s kid you know so yeah um I hate that i'm telling uh telling my age that's now, all good but, uh, it's all good we're representing and, um, we're representing it's all good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um so then i started just singing um i got married uh after my first year of college i was uh i was 19 mary beth was 20 Oh, wow. And um, we were both in Bible college and uh, would travel on weekends and sing and, and do some stuff like that. So it's probably with that, it's been a little over 30 years, but uh, so cool. this has kind of been my, been my life. Yeah. That is so very cool. And so you've led worship. Now, where are you from? Where's home for you? Cause you're not from Orlando. I'm originally from, no, I'm originally from the St. Louis area. Okay. And so uh, just on the Illinois side, Mm -hmm. um and so all of my family is still in that area wow. and uh so i uh went to bible college in springfield missouri and then uh came back I, for a little I bit was born in missouri really yeah i don't remember much gonna... i was like there for like two until i was like two or three military oh okay yeah yep that's yep. So, was yeah. that uh like fort leonard wood yeah in that area or something right. Fort okay Lynn, they call it fort lost in the woods right <laughs> yeah that's about it yeah um i do remember that one of those back and forth from home to college uh 
they do have some speed traps there. So you have to watch uh, in, the, in those areas. <laughs> but, uh, so then we moved to um, in Denver. I served a couple years in Denver. And uh, that's where we had our first, uh, first child, my oldest daughter. And uh, three weeks after she was born, we were in the car moving to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Oh, my God. And, uh, yeah, now I realize how insane that was. Yeah. Um, and so we moved to uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and uh, served there for 12 years wow. and was uh, a part of a lot of different uh, you know, neat experiences and, and things that we were able to do. Yeah. And then, uh, I traded in my snow shovel and <laughs> snow blower and coats. And I moved to Orlando and then out to California. So you were um, done with the snow. You were done with it. Yep. That's so yep. cool. Done. Wow. So what has that been like? Because you're like literally different cultures, you know, different regions of the country, yeah. different cultures. What has that been like? trying to navigate finding you know finding the vein or you know i know it's from it's one thing yeah. to go from one church to another but gosh just from the east coast to the west coast like what was that like yeah. worship wise the i think in the last um like the transition from orlando to here um was a it's a unique culture because out you know in this area um, Orlando kind of has its own little subculture of worship. Yeah. And we can be spoiled in, um, you know, there's certain things that, um, you know, depending upon because it's so much um, diversity or where people are from, like mm -hmm. in Orlando, everybody is from somewhere. Yes. You know, so the church that uh, I served at there uh, was largely, um, you know, Puerto Rican people yeah. from, um, you know, the Puerto islands, Puerto, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. just across the board, you name it. Yeah. So coming here, it's still very diverse, but it's different cultures. Okay. So you have Armenian, you have, um, there's so many different backgrounds and Fresno is primarily a kind of a, it's called kind of the Bible Belt of California, okay. but that's not, that's not saying, you know, California is still a different, different, a different, uh, boy. different breed. Boy, boy, boy. And <laughs> so, um, so it's, it was, you know, the culture, I think whatever it is, um, you know, there was, here's where we want to go and here's where we want to get there. But no matter where you serve, <clears throat> if you go to another church, my goal can't be, well, I want people to worship like they do at whatever church. Mm -hmm. Because your church is going to have its own DNA. It's yeah. going to have its own culture. And, you know, you have to find out what that is. And the only way that you find out that is by one knowing what's the heartbeat of your senior pastor and what are the people and their background in in your church so you have to get to know people and you have to not base it on a timeline or base it on what is the the hot new release on spotify and say well i have to do that um, because it can be foreign the style of music coming here was much different than the style of music of where I came from. Mm -hmm. So for me to throw out, you know, a chart or a CD, um, you know, it's music is music, but it's a, it's a different, yeah. you know, I was, I explained it like, it's not, it's not like speaking a different language, but it's a different dialect. Mm -hmm. And, um, That's you know, true. so there's certain things that from gospel or a Latin feel, yeah. um, if someone is primarily doing something in, you know, this vein over here, mm -hmm. it just, your ear has to, you have to give it some time and be patient. So. I, I think too, also 
in, in regards to moving to a different church, I think it's also important to take on or take time to understand what has already been established. Um, right. Instead of just walking in and saying, okay, what you guys used to do is wrong and we're not doing that anymore mm -hmm. and forget about everything that you've ever done. Yeah. I'm the new sheriff in town and this is how we're doing it. But right. taking time to, yeah, that's a, to understand the culture. That's a recipe for that. disaster. <laughs> totally, 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 totally. So, so here is the, here's the difference in um, the, the culture that I came into. Um, I had, and this is one of the reasons why initially I'm like, eh, I don't think I want to do this. So the worship pastor that was here before me served for 46 years at this church. 46 so, years? Yeah. Woo. So, so for me to come in and, you know, I came out, um, you know, a few months after he had retired. Um, now we had a mutual friend that I found out after a friend of mine that's an arranger. He was like, "Oh yeah, well I know I know Doug." Um, one of the first things that I did when I landed in town was I called up Doug, that was the previous worship pastor, mm -hmm. and I said, "Hey, can can I uh, can I take you to lunch? Can mm -hmm. we just can we talk?" I've been through church transitions. Um, I've this was the the third long term person that I had followed. Wow! And so I had some experience in one uh, a number of years ago. Actually, when I was in Wisconsin, I moved out to California for about six months. I don't like to talk about it because it it was. It was a difficult, um, it was a difficult experience in ministry. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I was in Green Bay for about eight years, and I received a call from a friend of mine who was in the Bay Area in uh, California. He was like, "Hey, I've been following what you are doing there musically and what the church is doing worship-wise. Would you come out because we really want to make some." changes and uh we want to you know do some new things yeah. so i think there was some things that it played to certain sides of me that i was like oh man this is cool i can go out i can make some changes and be involved in that mm -hmm. it's a new challenge i've been here for eight years and mm -hmm. so this is something new um and when i got there Three weeks after I was there, I had, you know, a board member that stopped me in the hall and said, hey, I think you've done enough change, you know, you've, um, and I spent about six months just, I had never dealt with depression in my life. Wow. But that was a time I can look at it and go, I, this is tough. Um, I had some, some good friends that were, I was on staff with. And finally, I had, there was other things. I had, you know, a house still back in Wisconsin that never sold. I had all of these pressures and stress. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went to the pastor and he was a friend of mine. I'm like, look, uh, we can be friends when this is all over. And I know that this is going to be hard for you. Mm. Um, you can tell the church whatever you want. I, I don't care. Yeah. But I can't, I can't do this anymore. And uh, so it was... It was a it was a, a humbling experience, and um, I've used this and taught this in workshops. When you go back, if I would have had some conversations with my senior pastor back in Wisconsin before I made that move, I think we could have we could have managed some things differently because there was a you know, I, I follow the senior pastor's lead and we change things fast. Right. Um, then I've also tried with change at a more moderate pace and slow <laughs> change. And um, it's, it's difficult for me to go, you know, and take that process slow. Yeah. But it's, 
it's way healthier for the church um, when you, and it's also honoring, um, you know, one of the first rehearsals and choir practices that we had Mm -hmm. at the church out here is just letting people know that, hey, we're all building on someone else's foundation. Right. Um, Unless you started that church, um, you're building on someone else's foundation. And even if you did start that church, you uh, you had some people who poured into your life yeah. to get you to that point, and so you need to honor that. That's right. Now, this building may look a little different than what might have been intended a mm-hmm. number of years ago, mm-hmm. but bottom line, I'm going to honor um, who has gone before me and know that even after me, this ministry will continue to go on. And so I had I had lunch with the uh, worship pastor that had left and retired, and and we sat down. It's the first time to talk to him, and he had his uh, journal next to him, and he said, "Hey, Matt, I've been praying for you a long time before I knew your name." Wow. And um, so he said, um, "Just know that uh, I won't be around to be in your business." but I'm here if you ever need anything. And, you know, it's, I think when you approach those things, not from, if, if you find that you're insecure, Mm -hmm. that someone is better than you, or someone has served longer, or they've served different than you, and that you feel like you have to prove yourself, you're really setting yourself up for failure that doesn't have to be. Right. And so if you just go in and just say, hey, I want to honor what you've done and I may have a different approach. And um, and then, then talking with the people who are there that have, you know, when he was there for that many years, yeah. there's some lifelong allegiances that uh, people have. And so it's just letting them know, hey, just because I do something different does not mean that what he does is bad and what I do is good. Yeah. Um, it just, this is, this is where we're at. Leading into that, yeah. um, it was only a short time after we arrived here. We arrived here in August and um, the church is you know, is known for having huge Christmas productions, having all of these things. So we had all the pressure of, I'm going into my first Christmas production. We've got all these things happening. And it was on December 23rd was our uh, first production. And uh, the first night of, you know, having a couple nights of productions. Um, Earlier in December, my wife, Mary Beth, had to... um, had gone to the doctor, was establishing some care. They said, Hey, we need to, we need to take a biopsy and we don't know, but we just want to be safe. Um, we had sound check at four o'clock on the 23rd at noon. Uh, we had to get the results of that biopsy, uh, which at that point we found out that, um, the biopsies that she had had done, uh, were malignant. And so four hours before that time, we have our worlds spinning upside down, finding out, okay, she has cancer. We didn't even know what that meant. And we had to go and spend the next few hours telling our daughters, um, calling family, and then go back in, put a smile on, and act like you've got it together and sing. And... Um, Wow. I, I still remember it was a it was a song that um, I think I think it might have been Travis Cottrell who had um, had written the song and it was um, fear not our God is with us mm-hmm. um, Emmanuel uh, has come and um, and it was I was singing, had to separate myself from that while I was singing, going, okay, we may be facing something that's beyond what we're capable of doing on our own, um, but we just have to trust in God and knowing. So moving 
forward into that, um, we started that year uh, in January, started aggressive treatment and uh, went through chemo through that year and uh, then found out um, after she was finished with chemo that uh, it had actually spread through that time. Um, she had a, an aggressive form of breast cancer uh, that's rare. Um, oddly, and it's, um, uh, but it's triple negative breast cancer. And uh, the weird thing about it was only, only 15%, she had no cancer in her family, only 15% of breast cancers are triple negative. Of that 15%, 70, 70% are African American. And uh, it's such a unique, so it was like rare, 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 you know, all of these things. And, um, and so we found out that it had spread. And then um, the end, uh, July 29th, uh, she had passed away. And um, before that, a couple months before that, um, we did a podcast together on, um, it's a podcast at that time is uh, called All About Worship. And I interviewed her on the podcast. And uh, we were talking about leading through brokenness and how in our lives we can walk through um, and we can say uh, the scripture that we held on to as a, as a family through that year and still to this day we have this. Uh, framed in our in our home is uh, Psalm 112 7 that they have no fear of bad news they confidently trust the Lord to care for them and um, I remember right before Mary Beth passed away this was a couple days before uh, one of the one of the girls we were standing outside in the backyard and uh, she was like dad we've we've been praying and we've been hanging on to the scripture. How do we know that God's going to care for us? And um, I knew because also when I was 14, my dad died of a heart attack. Um, just moved to relocated back to uh, community. and. So I was able to at least let them know, hey, one, from experience, God's never let us down. And God's brought me through this even when I was 14. I've seen God's hand that has walked with me through the loss of a parent. So I know that God's going to do this. I watched my mom go through losing her spouse, remarrying, and seeking God for someone in her life as you know time had passed and that came about um, so i knew that god was going to be there um, it's just the the pain of walking through those times and no one can take that pain away from you uh, god's the only one that can be there for you and it's still painful even even when he's walking with you through it there's pain involved uh, jesus didn't come that he could take our pain away and he can do all that. He came that he would walk with us through that. Mm -hmm. Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't fear evil because you're with me. You're rodding your staff. They don't make everything easy. Mm -hmm. They comfort. So the only way that you have comfort is walking through some trials. And um, I think through transition, and this is adding, there's a... There's so many layers of this, which and we why, can get. Which is why I said at the very we beginning, can, you hadn't even un you hadn't even touched the tip of the iceberg of this whole transition. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and going through, I think following someone, God, God is so amazing in the things that when we weren't looking to leave in Orlando, and I even went to our pastor. In Orlando and I'm like hey this church had contacted me 
we have no desire to go, but I just wanted to make sure, hey, if you feel like this is a transition that needs to happen, maybe this is a way that God is is setting this up. I just want to, I want to be open to you and say, hey, if you know, and he's like, no, no, I want you to, I want you to be here. So I'm like, okay, great. So then in a series of just God speaking to each of our daughters in a different way, one through a dream and another one, God just, um, just speaking to her coming and just saying, look, are we moving? I'm like, why would you even say that? Just out of the No, way. just, I've, I've just sensed every time that there's been a transition that I've sensed that, um, and I just wanted to know if we're moving. And so all of these things, I went back to Pastor Carl and I was crying in his office. I'm like, I don't even know what to do with this. And he was like, well, just whatever, whatever got you to this point, you at least need to check it out and see. And um, so we came out. I will say that I think the, that period of where it kind of takes a while for people to adjust to a new worship pastor, especially when that's the only worship pastor they've ever known. And then us adjusting to a new place where we have no family, no nothing, we're just there. Um, they came alongside us. And um, I think that that time was that bonding time. It There was a trust factor that sped up the process of us going okay we know that they love us we know that they're here for us and um you know it's god was was showing in such a real way that he had us where he wanted us and he had confirmed that time and time again so then when we look at it and go okay now my wife has passed away i have two daughters one that just finished her first year of high school. The other just finished her first year of college. And they're looking at me going, okay, now what dad? Um, I could still, I could still say with confidence, God brought us here and God showed us and he didn't have to. It was funny because after I had resigned at the church at faith, I was telling people and it happened in one one week, no joke, six different times, I would start to tell someone, hey, you know, God's been doing some things in our heart. And, you know, we have decided, you know, and felt God's leading us. And one of my good friends that was uh, in the band there and still is, he stopped me and he said, you don't even have to say, it's like two weeks ago, God woke me up and said, Matt and Mary Beth are going to be transitioning. Wow. He said, I haven't even told my wife. It was, it almost got comical because I would tell someone and they stopped and they were like, started crying. I'm like, did I say something? You know, I know that this, there's a lot of emotion in that. Yeah. No, my mom called me three weeks ago who doesn't attend faith and said, did Matt and Mary Beth resign? No, why would you say? Wow. And so it was all of those things. I think the the key point was we had to step out in faith, then God confirmed it afterwards. Yeah. And there are certain yeah. times it would be easy to make that decision um, if God would have said, hey, uh, you know, here's what you need to do. That kind of takes the faith out of it. Um, if we just like, oh, yeah, okay, you, you'll give me a thousand dollars if I just do this. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, you know, that's. But when we say, okay, I'm going to step out in faith, I'm scared to death. I was driving across country going, I, it was killing me to have my girls leave their best friends Mm -hmm. and them crying, looking at their Instagram posts when they're missing their friends. And I'm like, oh, I'm such a wretch of a dad. What am I doing? (laughs) Um, And I think knowing that God does care for us, that we can confidently trust him. We're walking through a period of time and 
you know, it's like the buzzword of the century, unprecedented. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, if we had a buck for every time that that <laughs> word has been mentioned, um, in California is like another level of, of crazy of things yeah. that we're walking through. And, yeah. um, but when we look at that and go, I can still say just as well that I don't have to have fear yeah. of bad news yeah. that I can confidently trust that God is caring for us. Yeah. Now, if, if we are in this time of, um, just a lot of unrest, you know, country you know, across the country. Yeah. Um, if we just want to prove a point mm -hmm. as Christians of, you know, with, well, you can't, you can't meet in person. Yeah. You, you have to go online, you know, and, and we can say, well, you know, I'm being persecuted as a Christian because I can't go into, well, I may have a little bit different take than some people. Um, and I had somebody that had asked me about that as well. They were like, you know, this is just horrible that we're being persecuted as, as, uh, as Christians. We can't meet in the church. I'm like, you know what? It, it is bad. And it's bad for the person that uh, can't go and meet in the bars because the bars are closed right now, too. That's horrible. They're being persecuted, too. People that want to eat in a restaurant, they're being persecuted. <laughs> we're all being persecuted. <laughs> and oh my I think there are times that... Um, you know, we, we're in a, a difficult time. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that there isn't some bent against right. the church. Yeah. Of course there is, mm -hmm. you know, we live in a, been. <laughs> um, a different society now. Mm -hmm. Um, but the bottom line is, um, the government politics, no one else can decide or can take my worship away from me. Right. Um, that is the only thing that I can control is the posture of my heart. Ah, that's if, good. if I want to, you know, go and, you know, just yell and say, you know, this is no fair. Um, okay. There are times if it comes to, they are, they are saying you need to, you know, bow down to that. Okay. Then gloves, gloves off let's go yeah um but at this time um you know and i go back and forth i could probably argue both sides of the coin you know at any time but i think the i've learned that when you're walking through difficulty whether it's the brokenness of losing a spouse whether it's navigating trying to raise kids and be in a position that you never thought you could, yeah. um, that you would find yourself in. People are watching what you do. If all they see is that you're going to, you know, pound a fist and want uh, something to be done about this or that, um, you want to pound your fist and go, this is not fair because my wife died. This is not fair. But if they watch you and just say, I'm going to worship because the only thing I can control the posture of my heart, I know that there are certain things that God allowed us, was continually showing us that he was caring for us. Mm -hmm. But when people would see that I was worshiping, that I wasn't asking them to, I would get up on Sundays and there were times that I was singing songs that were, um, I was crying my way through sound check to get through. Yeah. Um, but if I was transparent, I know that people can see, people can see whether you're, whether you're serious as a worship leader or not. I mean, they have, they have great radars that yeah. can say, oh yeah, he's just about, doing this or he wants to just get that response yeah when you show hey this is where this is where i'm at i'm broken right now but i still know 
that just because God didn't heal Mary Beth in the way that I prayed for, it doesn't change his character. Yeah. He still healed her. It just wasn't the way that I thought. Yeah. And when you do that and you lead not just a church, but you lead as a friend, you lead as a parent, when you lead as a staff member, um, at the end of the day, I'm just Matt and I don't have it all figured out. I mess up. I do things that I'm like, why did I do that? Why did I respond to that person like that? I got mad and I had no business getting mad. Mm -hmm. And, um, but when I'm transparent and let people see this is where I'm at, they are, they're more likely to follow you yeah. um, and go, okay, if you're leading worship and this is what you're saying, I'll follow you along this journey uh, because they know that you're, you're going to be honest with them. Yeah. yeah. And they know that you, you, you are, they're able to trust you in what you're saying because they know that, right. you, are, that, that you, you know where they are, you know? Yeah. You're giving, you're showing. Sorry, I went. No, you, but you took us on such a journey. Like it was so, it, you, you started a trans from transition to, you know, dealing with loss and brokenness to um, understanding that only you're responsible for the posture of your heart back to leading people. And, you know, it doesn't matter where, whether or not you're trans transitioning from the church to a different church or the, 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 transitioning in your homes and your personal lives um at the end of the day as leaders we still have to maintain the posture of our hearts and, and being being pure and being right viable and being um moldable and so that god can can use us to lead his people right yeah and so right. you you showed us how to how that how that happened how, how we do that it's been uh, it's been a crazy journey. Um, so in 2015, um, Mary Beth passed away, and a, a year after. So I was um, I'm thankful for. I have a friend that I work with on staff here that um, it was actually the the week that Mary Beth um, it was the week prior to her passing that he had called me. He said, "Hey, what?" what are you doing? I'm like, I'm uh, just, we're at the hospital right now. And, uh, at an appointment, he goes, what are you doing next Thursday? Like, I don't know what I'm doing two hours from now. Yeah. He goes, well, you got a counseling appointment. And, uh, if you don't show up, I'm coming to get you. And, um, so he set up an appointment with a counselor and, um, a strong Christian believer. And, um, um, Little did we know that she was going to pass away. That week after uh, she passed away, I was sitting in the chair at a counselor talking to somebody I'd never been. I had never, not that I was against counseling. I just never, never did it. Yeah. And, um, and it was, um, it was a lifesaver because I went, um, talk through things. Uh, my daughters were involved in the counseling. And so when I'm kind of navigating this process, trying to sort out the craziness and in my head going, how do I, how do I manage this? Um, so a few months after Mary Beth had passed away, we were in church one, uh, one morning, it was right before Thanksgiving. And I heard someone had texted me and they're like, Hey, did you, do you know the children's pastor over at, um, this church across town? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I, I don't. Um, they were like, well, um, he, he was speaking at church on, it was on a Sunday morning and, um, he had a, um, uh, heart condition, um, and passed away on that Sunday morning. And, um, uh, and so I, I didn't know, but it was a tragic thing that he was speaking in their main auditorium and right after their first service had uh, left to go back to the green room and, um, and ended up collapsing and uh, had a heart attack. So I just, you know, I was like, man, I, I hate it for that family. I understand it, you know, kind of brings back a lot of, you know, things you're like, I hate it. 
Well, this, um, that year following, so um, his widow uh, was attending uh, and going to counseling with the same, same Christian uh, counselor. So we were both going through grief counseling. She was involved in worship leading at their church. And um, we ended up meeting through our counselor that year after. And, um, and so kind of just met because we were both kind of freaks in this, um, you know, Fresno is not a huge community, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a, a decent sized community, but both of our churches or larger churches and people knew about both of our stories. And wow. so, um, so we, we just met one day for, um, for coffee after I talked with my daughters. And, um, so there's a lot that we can unpack through there, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we met and, uh, and we started realizing, oh man, this is weird. You know, I, I'm always like, I feel like, you know, I just got the shaft here, God. And I would tell my counselor, I'm like, I, I don't know if, I don't want to get into a situation of if I don't want to be alone all my life, uh, but I don't want to connect with someone who has no concept of what, um, you know, at that time, over 25 years of ministry, being involved in ministry, if they don't understand ministry, this could be a train wreck. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, you know, talking with her and she was like, I've always been a pastor's wife and, you know, her husband was a, on staff at that church for over 15 years and as a children's pastor. And this is what my life has been as ministry. And I don't know, you know, and so we started talking more and uh, then in uh, 2017 um, ended up getting married and uh, we have a combined seven kids yeah. uh, so yeah. my two daughters and uh her five boys yeah. uh were are uh, were standing up with us at the wedding and um both uh, Mary Beth's brother and sister-in-law and so her family came out and flew out to California for the wedding and um then uh Carrie's in-laws that were a part of the wedding as well and um i think there are times when you are intentional about bringing people along in the journey yeah it doesn't make it easier they're still messy there's times when you have to walk through um but it was so great to be able to to stand there and go you know we've both been through some difficult journeys and we're both standing in front of people that we never thought we would be here. Right. Um, but God can take the difficult circumstances in our lives and he can, he can give beauty for ashes and he can take a difficult circumstance mm -hmm. and say, I'm not going to take the pain away, but you have someone that you can walk alongside and I'm not done with your journey. Just because Mary Beth passed away doesn't mean that God's plan for my life is done. Yeah. Um, and I felt that way for a while that I remember a certain morning that I, I heard a song and it was, oh, wait a second. God's, God's not done with me. Yeah. And that there are still new things that he wants to uh, do in my life. And so our ministry has taken on a different, um, kind of a different level and different layers. Mm -hmm. In addition to leading worship, um, I've also been able to um, help people who are walking through grief and loss and then finding love again and knowing how to, how do I, uh, how do I navigate this? How do we blend families how do you blend friends how do you blend two churches that um right. you know are on different sides and now we have my close friends were staff members here and her close friends are staff members there wow. and uh, so it's a it's a it's been a crazy journey but so 
um, so rewarding when you can look back and go, you know, God, you still are just as real today showing us that we don't have to fear bad news. As tragic as it may be in both of our circumstances, mm-hmm. um, that he will still care for us. Yeah. He will still be there for us. And so, so it, um, I would say, and being able to lead worship together um, has also given a different dimension uh, for us being able to say, you know, we understand what you're walking through and we can still tell you, trust God, worship through it, because our res- our initial response is to push away. Um, but that is the one thing. He is the one person yeah. that we don't need to push away. We need to hold on to knowing that that he is there to be with us. So Wow, Matt. And, you know, being on the other side of the country, <laughs> you know, watching <laughs> you and Mary Beth and, and watching all of this unfold and praying for you, you know, you know, like I said earlier, you have, you have walked with such grace, you know, and um, just the presence of God watching you walk through this time, you and your girls watching you guys walk through this time was just so encouraging and rewarding. And um, it, it really, it has been and still is a testament of God's presence and God's hand uh, on you guys. And, and so thank you for being so transparent and thank you for letting us walk with you guys and, um, and praying with you through this time. And, and, and now thank you for sharing your story today, because I really yeah. believe that, you know, just <laughs> during these times, so many people have lost so much and not just, in their lives with right. people and loved ones. And um, I was talking about the, the whole grieving process um, a couple of weeks ago with a guest, a Shayla, and just talking about walking through that, through that time and just watching God turn this brokenness into something beautiful. It just yeah. such a testament of God's faithfulness. So thank you so much for sharing that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I think that um, regardless of what step we are in, you know, and, and people are right now during this time, they're, people are experiencing loss in so many different levels. Yeah. Um, whether it's being, feeling isolated, yeah. um, whether it's, yeah. um, they're feeling loss of connection. Mm-hmm. Um, they're feeling, you know, so many different things, whether it's, financial loss you know we've been walking through some different times of as a country we're dealing with topics and conversations that need to be dealt with and people are you know having to um just lay aside so many things and Mm -hmm. feeling so much yeah and um so i think it may not be that someone has walked through the death of a spouse or a loved one, but there's other types of loss. Um, I think we can look at it and say, well, my, you know, my situation is different than yours. And, and yeah, it may have a different label, Mm -hmm. but that still doesn't, it still, it doesn't take you losing someone close to you Mm -hmm. to have loss that we we're walking through there's difficulty in relationships are being tested right now because people have been you know locked up in their homes and it's getting on the last nerves and and you don't want people to know you're like well i don't want to deal with this i don't want anybody to know because um what are they going to think of me at church um all of these things um now has been a time that we I think more than ever, we just say, look, here we are. We don't have it all figured out, but um, we know who does and who will walk with us yeah. and um, and allow that to come through. Yeah, that's so, so true. So true. Well, um, before we go, would you mind just taking a moment and just praying for anyone that may be watching this and just yeah. in that space of of loss? Yeah, yeah, definitely. God, we thank you today, Lord, for um, 
for the fact that you never waste anything, mm. Lord, that uh, we can look at situations and experiences and we um, can wonder why or how we were walking through this. Um, but Lord, I thank you that you can take the difficult spaces in our lives and you can still bring beauty out of it. Yeah. And Lord, for those who are facing difficult mountains in their life, maybe it's from health challenges, it's financial challenges, um, relational, whatever it might be. Lord, I just thank you that just because we are going through this doesn't change who you are, that you are still our healer, you are still our deliverer, you are still our provider. And Lord, I thank you for any need that is represented. God, may you get the glory out of it. Lord, that when we're tempted to um, uh, run away from you, Lord, that we would change, that we would run to you, knowing that you can help in our time of need. We love you, God, and I thank you. In your name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. Yay. I love you, man, and I'm, I'm grateful for your for your friendship. I'm grateful for um, the the connection that God has allowed us to have. Um, I know that you're out in California, and um, I know you said that you're about 30 minutes away from the whole evacuation area. So we'll definitely yeah. keep you and your family and your church in prayer. Yep. Just that God. Yep. It's um, the whole. The whole state is walking through some real challenges, you know, with, you know, hazardous air quality. Um, you know, it smells like a campfire in your living room. And then you go to church, it ought to be better at church and everything smell. You just smell smoke and ash all over and see it. But, um, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been an amazing thing to see different churches rise up and say, we're not just going to dig a hole and hide yeah. but this is a time for us to show god's love like no other yeah. and how can we how can we shine the light and so so they're they're making some progress on the fires that are close to us mm -hmm. and um still some some loss and things that people have experienced but uh um but it's it's provided opportunities for us to help help families in need yeah well if we can help you in any way don't hesitate to let us let me know and i will definitely share it with our community and, thank you um again thank you so much i love you hey guys if you are wanting to connect with um pastor matt his facebook will definitely make sure to, to, that we tag his yep. uh, facebook there and um on instagram he is pastor gadget right <laughs> <laughs> yep so yep. we'll instagram is pastor gadget and then uh, you can just find me on facebook at uh just Matt Perkins. Um, and if you, uh, if there's something, feel free, maybe you were walking through, um, maybe you're walking through some difficult times and you're trying to navigate whether it's um, challenges in losing someone or walking through loss. Um, if you want, um, my email is matt at mattperkins.org. If there's something you don't want to share on, uh, if you don't do messenger or do whatever, um, please let me know and uh, we'd love to uh, to help you in any way we can. And there's some uh, things on YouTube. The Family Blend is uh, uh, my wife and I, uh, Carrie, uh, have some music, but also uh, share with people um, about our experiences and our journey in blending families. I love it. I love it. We're a blended family too. My, my family, we're, we're a blended family. So beautiful things can come out of that. I tell you, yep. it's such a blessing. Yep. It's such a, it's blessing. a fun thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Hey, love you. I Thanks love you so much. And I love you too. I appreciate you so much.